Five things I wish I knew before learning Rust, starting with prerequisite knowledge. Rust is a low-level language with memory management at the center of everything you do. So before learning Rust, it's extremely helpful to have a fundamental understanding of certain CS concepts and practical experience with other low-level languages. When it comes to CS concepts, it's important to know the different memory regions available to your program, like the stack, heap, and static memory, and what each is used for. You also want to know how memory allocation and deallocation work, and the difference between manual memory management and garbage collection. You also want to understand how concurrency and parallelism works. Understanding the concepts of multi-threading, synchronization, and parallel processing is important when working with Rust's concurrency features. You also want to have an understanding of compiled versus interpreted languages and a basic understanding of object-oriented programming and functional programming. Understanding these computer science basics will help you understand the technical decisions and trade-offs Rust has made as a language. It'll help you understand Rust's feature set and the compile time error messages you'll inevitably encounter when programming in Rust. Now, when it comes to experience with other low-level languages, I'm really talking about C and C++, specifically an understanding of references, raw pointers, smart pointers, the RAII pattern in C++, principles like zero-cost abstractions, dynamic versus static dispatch and virtual tables, and the way error handling works with return codes and exceptions. Having practical experience with these features and concepts will serve you well when learning Rust because Rust builds on top of these features and solves some of the problems in C and C++. For example, the ownership system in Rust is inspired by the RAII pattern in C++. But unlike C and C++, Rust gets rid of the notion of null pointers, a billion dollar mistake, and instead has an option enum. Rust also provides a result type for error handling instead of using error codes or exceptions. This allows for explicit type-safe error handling without hidden control flow. When I started learning Rust, I came from a web development background, so I didn't have a good understanding of these CS concepts or practical experience with C and C++. So I had to learn these things along the way. The ownership model in Rust was difficult for me to wrap my head around until I understood the RAII pattern in C++. And understanding pointers and references in Rust made a lot more sense once I knew how they worked in C++. The second thing I wish I knew before learning Rust is where to find the best Rust learning resources. In terms of prerequisite knowledge, for CS Fundamentals, you can watch the Harvard CS50 lectures for free on YouTube. I also have a memory management playlist on YouTube as well. And for C and C++ Fundamentals, I highly recommend watching the Cherno on YouTube. Now, when it comes to learning resource for Rust specifically, there are a few. Of course, there's the Rust book, which is a great intro to Rust. And if you prefer a video format, I have a playlist going over the entire book. There's also the Rust by Example book, the Rustlings GitHub repo full of Rust exercises. And if you want a more comprehensive curated list of Rust resources, there's the idiomatic Rust GitHub repo. Now, if you're looking for Rust deep dives, I highly recommend John Jensett's Crust of Rust series on YouTube and his book, Rust for Rust Stations. Now, once you get a good understanding of Rust, you'll want to learn how to use Rust for your specific use case. For low-level programming, Philip Opperman has a blog series going through writing an operating system in Rust. And if you're interested in embedded software, there's the embedded Rust book. If you're interested in WebAssembly, there's the WebAssembly Rust book. And if you're looking to do server programming with Rust, Jeremy Chone has a full Axum course on YouTube. Additionally, there's the Zero to Prod in Rust book, which I highly recommend. Not only will it teach you how to build Rust server-side projects, but it will also teach you how to make your code production ready. And if you're looking for an all-in-one resource, I actually recently launched a free Rust course on my website. I've put together my YouTube videos in a curated curriculum with additional resources and exercises built right in. And it's open source so you can contribute to it and make it better. Now, despite knowing what to learn and where to get the information, you'll inevitably get slapped in the face with a harsh truth when you start learning Rust. A truth I wish someone told me before starting my Rust journey. And that is, your productivity will slow down a lot, especially at first. And by productivity, I mean the speed at which you can write apps in Rust. I'm not accounting for long-term maintenance costs or the time spent debugging runtime bugs. Rust is not like JavaScript or Python, where you can just bash your keyboard for five minutes and have a running app. It's a strongly typed language, which means you have to declare and think about your types beforehand. It's also a low-level language, which comes with inherent complexity. Complexity, which shows up in the syntax and the advanced concepts you'll need to know, especially around memory management. 
Rust also has a strict compiler because it's making the trade-off of having a high degree of safety in exchange for strict compile time rules. So although your productivity in Rust will certainly improve over time, you're not gonna be able to hack together an app as fast as you would with JavaScript or Python. On the bright side, there's a second truth I wish I knew before learning Rust, and that is Rust will make you a better developer. First of all, Rust will force you to have a deeper understanding of low-level concepts, like the complexities of strings, memory management, and concurrency. And you'll also encounter complex language features like metaprogramming and the foreign function interface. Another way Rust will make you a better developer is by shifting the way you think about programs. Humans have two fundamental resources, time, the time we have here on Earth, and attention, or what we choose to do with that time. Computers also have two fundamental resources, compute, or processing power, and storage. Rust seeks to optimize both resources, and it forces you to think about runtime performance and how things are laid out in memory, which is great for low-level software. Learning Rust will also improve your code quality because Rust teaches you how to leverage the type system to write robust code by turning runtime bugs into compile time errors. This is done through features like strict static typing, where you have to think about your types beforehand, exhaustive pattern matching, which ensures all scenarios are considered, immutability by default, and the result and option enum, which force you to explicitly handle errors and null values respectively. The best part is you can take these language features and patterns, or at least some of them, and apply them to other languages like TypeScript. The fifth thing I wish I knew before learning Rust is that Rust is not just hype. When I started this channel three years ago, I didn't know if Rust was gonna take off or not. Of course, it was an educated guess and I was optimistic about Rust, but the software space moves so fast, it's hard to tell what's gonna stick and what's simply gonna fade away. But three years later, seeing the community growth, the industry adoption, and the growth of this channel, I can confidently say that Rust is here to stay. And Let's Get Rusty will continue to be here to help you in your Rust learning journey. Speaking of which, make sure to get your free Rust cheat sheet at letsgetrusty.com slash cheat sheet. Hope you've enjoyed the video and remember to stay rusty.